Systematic responses. Nervous system, systematic response. In the nervous system, external and internal stimuli can elicit two categories of responses, an excitatory, inhibitory, and an action potential which is normal. When a neuron is stimulated by an excitatory impulse, neuronal dendrites are bound by neurotransmitters, that cause cells to become permeable to a specific type of ion. And essentially the type of neurotransmitter determines which ion, the neurotransmitter will become permeable to. An excitatory response is generated in excitatory postsynaptic potentials, which are caused by an excitatory neurotransmitter. Normally glutamate binds to neurons dendrites, causing an influx of sodium ions through channels that are located near the binding site. This membrane permeability change in the dendrites is known as a local graded potential, which causes membrane voltage to change from negative resting potential to a more positive voltage, a process known as depolarization. Sodium channels opening nearby other opening sodium channels, allow a change in permeability to spread from dendrites to the cell body. Strong enough graded potential or several graded potentials occurred at the fastest frequency, enable depolarization to spread across the cell body to the axon hillock. An action potential can be generated and propagated down a neuron's axon, from the axon hillock, causing sodium ion channels in the axon to open as the impulse travels. Once a signal begins to travel down an axon, the membrane potential has already passed the threshold, and it cannot be stopped. This phenomenon is known as an all-or-nothing response. Groups of sodium channels opened by membrane potential strengthen change in the signal as it travels away from the axon hillock, allowing it to lengthen the axon. As depolarization reaches the end of an axon or axon terminal, the neuron end becomes permeable to calcium ions, that enter the cell via calcium ion channels. The release of neurotransmitters is caused by calcium stored in synaptic vesicles, which enter the synapse between two neurons known as presynaptic and postsynaptic neurotic. If a signal from the presynaptic neuron is excitatory, it will cause a release of an excitatory neurotransmitter, causing a similar response in the postsynaptic neuron. These neurons communicate with thousands of other receptors and target cells through complex, extensive dendritic networks. Communication between receptors in this fashion enables discrimination and a more explicit interpretation of external stimuli. In their frequency, these localized graded potentials trigger action potentials that communicate, along nerve axons arriving in specific cortexes of the brain. In these highly specialized parts of the brain, signals are coordinated with others to trigger a new response. Normally if a signal from the presynaptic neuron is inhibitory neurotransmitters, GABA will be released into the synapse. This neurotransmitter causes an inhibitory postsynaptic potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Essentially this response causes the postsynaptic neuron to become permeable to chloride ions, making the membrane potential of the cell negative, basically a negative membrane potential. Making it more difficult for the cell to fire an action potential, and prevents any signal from being passed through the neuron. A neuron can be either excitatory or inhibitory, depending on the type of stimulus. Though receptors and stimuli vary, most extrinsic stimuli first generate localized graded potentials in neurons associated with the specific sensory organ or tissue. Behavior response. Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov, 1849-1936, was a practical scientist who experimented with training animals to respond to a particular stimulus, even when that stimulus was removed of which is known as classical conditioning, a scientific concept of conditioning or learning by association with particular stimuli. It calls for pairing a stimulus that elicits a specific response with one that does not until the second stimulus elicits a response like the first. Classical conditioning is contrasted with operant conditioning, which involves administering or withholding reinforcements, rewards, based on the performance of a targeted response. Many experiments of this type demonstrated that an innate behavior can be modified. Genomic imprinting while genomic is a full set of chromosomes, they are all the inheritable traits of an organism. Imprinting is a chemical mark made by pressure, essentially a figure or mark impressed or printed on something. In the psychology of animal behavior, imprinting is rapid learning that occurs during a brief receptive period. Typically, soon after birth or hatching, that establishes a long-lasting behavioral response to a specific individual or object, as attached to an offspring, parent, or site. Genomic imprinting is epigenesis that results in monoallelic gene expression according to a parental origin. Whereas genes are expressed in a specific manner according to the parent of origin. Independent of the classical Mendelian inheritance, genomic imprinting is an inherited process. The epigenetic process involves DNA and histone methylations without altering the genetic sequence. These epigenetic marks of the parents are established, basically, imprinted, in the germline, egg cells or sperm, and are maintained through mitotic cell divisions in the somatic cells of an organism. There is a lack of time for reprogramming to be completely achieved during somatic cell nuclear transfer. Imprinting may cause problems in cloning, with clones having DNA that isn't methylated in correct positions. The nucleus is added to an egg during somatic cell nuclear transfer, and then the egg quickly starts dividing within minutes after that. Unlike the days or months, 
it takes for reprogramming during embryonic development. If time is the factor, to give time for proper reprogramming to occur, it may be possible to delay cell division in clones. For normal development appropriate imprinting of certain genes is important. Imprinted genes have major effects on development and placental biology before birth. There is evidence that suggests that imprinted genes also have important roles after birth. In studies, they have been shown to exert important effects on postnatal development, growth, and survival on adult phenotypes. Imprinted genes are emerging as key regulators of metabolic processes. Influencing the maintenance of body temperature, food intake, and adiposity by acting on multiple pathways and tissues. Many imprinted genes are expressed in the brain and affect diverse aspects of behavior from adult social behavior to infant feeding and sleep. Cognitive neuroscientists have found that genomic gene expression does dramatically influence brain behavior and development, and may also contribute to a variety of brain disorders. Recent work on postnatal stages has shown that imprinted genes influence a wide-ranging array of biological processes, the effects of which extend into adulthood. The imprinting inherited chemical mark on a gene shuts off but doesn't delete it. Often that mark will shut off the mother's gene, and other times the father's gene. From generation to generation which gene is turned off or on appears to be consistent, and it is always inherited from the same parent. Both origin genes of the father and mother exert different pattern expressions in developmental shifts. The maternal genes play a 60% leading role in early development, and the paternal genes play a 70% role in stepping on stage during adulthood. While scientists do have some ideas about which parent's gene is activated during imprinting, they aren't clear on what is genomic imprinting function, why it takes place nor why maternal bias shifts to paternal bias either. Demonstrations of genomic imprinting have been done on animals, fungi, and plants. Predominantly imprinting was recognized in mammals about 30 years ago from embryological and genetic studies. This imprinting has evolved as a mechanism that balances parental resource allocations onto offspring. As a result, epigenetic and genetic disruptions alter the specific dosage of imprinting genes and can lead to developmental abnormalities that are often associated with fetal growth and neurological behavior. Disrupted expression of imprinted genes is an important cause of human disease. Investigations of mouse mutants have been important in unraveling the roles of imprinted genes and for elucidating some of the pathophysiological mechanisms involved in human imprinted syndromes. There were about 150 imprinted genes found in mice and half that in humans as of 2014. Imprinted genes are a contributory factor in a wide range of common diseases, such as cancer, diabetes mellitus, intrauterine growth restriction, obesity, and psychiatric disorders. Over the past 20 years since the first gene was discovered, other mechanisms have been implicated in this regulatory mode of gene expression. Epigenetic and genetic causes at least eight imprinting human disorders some of which are Angelman, Beckwith, Wiedemann, BWS, Prader-Willi, and Silver, Russell, SRS, syndromes. Other conditions that involve imprinting include pseudohypoparathyroidism and transient neonatal diabetes mellitus. Unbalanced imprinting may be a cause of autism and psychosis, and essentially it is an imprinting brain theory. Both Angelman and Prader-Willi syndromes were the first imprinted genetic disorders found in humans, and these syndromes are associated with loss of the chromosomal region. This region contains the maternally expressed gene UBE3A, and the paternally expressed genes NDN and SNRPN. The maternal inheritance of deletion is associated with Angelman syndrome, and it is characterized by epilepsy, tremors, and an everlasting facial expression of a smile. The paternal inheritance of a deletion of the region is associated with the Prader-Willi syndrome, and it is characterized by hypotonia, hypogonadism, and obesity. There is three known as, R1 or NOE2, are maternally imprinted and paternally expressed genes that are located on chromosome 1 in humans. Deletion or reduction of the DIRAS3 expression is linked to an increased risk of breast and ovarian cancers. The protein encoded by DIRAS3 is not expressed in 41% of breast and ovarian cancers, and this suggests that it functions as a tumor suppressor gene. As a result, if uniparental dismay occurs and the person inherits both chromosomes from the mother. Since the gene will not be expressed, the individual is at a greater risk for developing both breast and ovarian cancers. Violent Behavior Genes In a developed country such as Finland, scientific research shows there are two genes associated with violent behavior, the monoamine oxidase A, MAOA, and a variant of cadherin 13 CDH13. Unfortunately, they believe the genes couldn't be used to screen criminals as a crime prevention measure and shouldn't influence convictions. It appears they were in the early stages of research with these genotypes. However, they say at least 5 to 10% of all violent crimes could be attributed to individuals with these genotypes. Offenders with both genes are 13 times more likely to have a history of repeat violent behavior. Criminals who commit at least one murder are believed to carry a low-activity version of the MAOA gene, unlike criminals who commit multiple murders. The low-activity version of MAOA is dubbed as the warrior gene due to its link to aggressive behavior. Monoamine oxidase A, known too as MAOA, is an enzyme in humans that is encoded by the MAOA gene. 
The MAOA gene is one of two neighboring family members' genes that encodes mitochondrial enzymes that catalyze the oxidative deamination of amines, such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. A mutation of this gene results in the Brunner syndrome. This gene has also been associated with other various psychiatric disorders, including antisocial disorder. In humans, the promoter of the MAOA gene is located on the X chromosome. There is a 30 base repeated number sequence in the promoter region of MAOA. There are 2R, 3R, 3.5R, 4R, and 5R variants of the repeat sequence. The frequency distribution of variants of the MAOA gene between ethnic groups varies. MAOA is a key regulator of normal brain function. MAOA's function affects the following systems. 1. Dopamine system, which is involved in arousal, mood, motivation, reward, and other behaviors. 2. Epinephrine-slash-norepinephrine system, which facilitates autonomic nervous system activity and the fight-or-flight reactions. 3. Serotonin system, which is involved in impulse control while affecting appetite, regulation, and sleeps. DAT1 gene, known as the dopamine transporter or SLC6A3, is a membrane-spanning protein that pumps the neurotransmitter dopamine out of the synaptic cleft back into the cytosol. In the cytosol, other transporters sequester the dopamine into vesicles for storage and later release. Dopamine reuptake via DAT provides the primary mechanism through which dopamine is cleared from synapses. Evidence points to a possibly larger role of the norepinephrine transporter, and there may be an exception in the prefrontal cortex. DAT is implicated in several dopamine-related disorders, including alcoholism, attention deficit hyperactivity, and bipolar disorders, and clinical depression. Evidence for the associations between DAT and dopamine-related disorders has come from a type of genetic polymorphism, known as a VNTR, in the DAT gene, DAT1, which influences the amount of protein expressed. In humans, the gene that encodes, the DAT protein is located on human chromosome 5, which consists of 15 coding exons, and is roughly 64 kbp long. t cadherin known as cadherin 13 or h cadherin HART, CDH13, is a member of the cadherin superfamily, and due to lack of cytoplasmic and transmembrane domains, it is anchored to cell's membrane through the GPI anchor. Classical cadherins are for cell-to-cell -cell contact, regulation of morphogenetic processes in embryos, and tissue integrity in the adult organism. Cadherins function as membrane receptors mediating inside and outside of signals. Thus, activating small GT passes and beta catenin slash WNT pathway, and then resulting in changes in the phenotype and cytoskeleton reorganization. Since T. cadherin is a GPI-anchored member of the cadherin superfamily and doesn't have the intracellular domains, its involvement is low-density lipoproteins, LDL, harmonic effects on Ca2 plus mobilization and increased cell migration along with phenotype changes. The exact signaling adapter and partner proteins for T. cadherin remains to be elucidated. In humans, the T. cadherin gene is located on the 16th chromosome. While advances in imaging and neurochemistry technology do show that many imaging and emotional disorders such as anxiety, depression, suicide, and violence involve disruptions in the brain's normal activity due to altered chemical imbalances, environmental factors, and gene expressions. The violence in our society has motivated biomedical researchers, psychologists, and sociologists to look for genetic causes, markers, and predictors for such destructive human behavior. The overall variance in aggressive behavior seems to be explainable by genetic influences. Nature and nurture are genotypes included in the environmental factors that we are exposed to throughout life and either contribute to reshaping and shaping of the brain functions. Specific genes expression of the brain such as DAT1, DRS2, and MAOA can affect neurotransmitter levels, in turn, influencing abuse, diet, sleep quality, social relationships, stress, and substance abuse. During the early 1990s, researchers linked increased frequencies of antisocial behavior with low levels of MAOA especially when individuals had a history of being mistreated during childhood. A later investigation conducted in 2008 by Guo and colleagues, revealed MAOA variants in 2,500 American boys from 7th to the 12th grade. They had demonstrated a genetic basis for severe aggressive behavior that was seen at school. The MAOA gene, VNTR2RMAOA, was a risk factor of violent delinquency when the boys suffered other stresses such as failing school, family issues, or low popularity. Such studies suggest that when subject to an abusive childhood, Individuals with low MAOA expression are at an increased risk of developing antisocial personality disorder. And a lifetime of committing violent crimes, exploiting, manipulating, and violating the rights of others may be the results.